Welcome to another video on data to decisions. In today's video, we'll be building a bubble chart. Bubble charts are helpful to visualize three different variables. So for example, the revenue, the net margin percentage, and also the number of employees in each company. So there are three different values or measures that we can compare for each of the companies. So the company name is here, the number of employees, the revenue, as well as the net margin percentage. That can be visualized in a bubble chart like this. So we'll be building it from scratch, and I'll also explain the purpose and how the bubble charts can be helpful for data analysis. Let's get started. So now we have this raw data, and we're going to use this to create a bubble chart. So the first thing I want to do is to click somewhere outside this table. I don't want to click inside the data. And I'm going to do insert ribbon, charts, choose the bubble, the first one. And now you have uh, an empty bubble chart. Right click on it, select data. We're going to add multiple series. Um, so I've colored them differently so you can easily see. So basically there are tech companies, there are banks. So those are the two series that I'll be working with. So the first thing is let's put tech. You can give a name to the first series and I'm going to give it as tech and I'm going to choose the X values. So the bubble chart as it says, it has the x, x axis and then the y. And in this case, I've decided to go with the revenue in my x axis. So I'm going to select the revenue values for the four companies in the tech sector and then use this. Um, and bubble size, same thing. I will. So the bubble size is, um, as we will see in a scatter plot, there are only two dimensions, right? So there are, there is only the uh, x axis and the y axis and all the points on your scatter plot are similar in size or equal in size. But here we can actually control the size of the circles or the dots or the bubbles. So I'm going to use the employee count in these companies to represent size of the bubbles. So we'll take a look at it as soon as we create. So I'm going to go and press OK. Before we handle the bank's data, let's just take a look at the simple bubble chart. When you hover over it, it will show you the value. So basically, this is 38,994 is the revenue, and then 15.9% is the net margin percentage. But why are these two circles not the same in size? And that's because the larger size circle represents a company with more employees because we use the bubble size to point to the employee number. So now before we go and format the bubble chart, let's add the second series. The second series is uh, banks. So I can call it bank. X axis will be revenue for the banks. Y axis will be net margin percentage for the banks. The bubble size will be the number of employees in those banks. Okay, so now I'm gonna press okay. So now we have two series and automatically it puts them in different colors. And let's start formatting it before we start analyzing the results. So I want to add the axis titles and I can then make sure that it's clear what we are visualizing here. So this is net margin percentage. And I like to make sure that the axis labels are uh, in the right format. So right click format axis and uh, go to the number, make sure that you don't have extra decimals that it's not actually adding any value to the story or the message that you're trying to communicate using this chart. The next thing I want to do is to, um, I can add a title and I will go and add a title. Um, again, revenue, you can, uh, revenue versus margin versus um, employees by sector. So because we have two different sectors, so maybe I'll, have a name like that. Now, the next thing is to add a legend. I want to make sure that it's clearly, um, the two sectors are clearly visually shown. So the legend, you can move it to the top. Uh, and I think in, in my case, I want to have as much space as possible for the actual chart. So I could move them, organize them a little bit like this so I can still have more space for my chart. Okay, so now we have done with that. So now let's go and format the grid line. So 
the grid lines are these horizontal and then the vertical lines. So if you click on them and then go into the fill option and say, yes, I want a solid line, but I want the color uh, to be very, very less, I mean, less visible. So I will do that for both um, the horizontal and the vertical grid lines. They are helpful to orient ourselves, but at the same time, I don't want it to be um, a cause for distraction. So that's why I still keep them not very prominent. Now, let's go and format the data point. Uh, right click on the yellow series, which is the banks, and I can go in and format the data series. I can change the uh, color of the series if I would like. Um, and I can also, uh, you know, do a border. So if I want a darker yellow border, something like that. So you have formatting control over. Um, this so I can do that same thing for the red series. Okay, so there you have it. So you can control the formatting. And as the um, an important part of what is missing by default is the, the label. So I don't know which company is this circle. So in order for that, we will have to go and add labels, add data labels. Automatically, Excel puts in this value as a data label. And so I will click on that go to the label options and I don't want to see the y value and I would want to see in this example the bubble size and that's because the bubble size represents the size of the um, circle and whereas the revenue and the net margin I can see from the x-axis and y-axis but the circle size um, is the only thing I can go with for employees and I don't know if it's 100 employees or 198,000 employees. So I've added the bubble size as my label. Now I do want to have the name of the company. So I will check this box value from cells and then go and select. So since I've selected the yellow series, which is the banks, I need to go and say, use these four values as labels for these points. And I will hit okay. So now you will start seeing that the bank names are visible. Bank name comma the number of employees one thing i like to do is to for the separator to have to be a new line which automatically puts the label and then the the bubble size here and this is something again it works for this scenario uh, but you have control over what you want to do as a separator you can do a comma and do a period and so on the point is you organize it in such a way that it the user is able to clearly see and get the information they want from your chart. Okay, so now moving on, we know the um, the name of the label, which is the company, and then also the number of employees. Let's do the same thing for the X series. I can click on the one of the red data points, and then I'll go to the label options. We don't even have a label option. So first thing is to add a label. So right click and add a label. You can also add a label by going to the plus here, and then I can say data labels, and then, you know, I want more options. So I can go to the label options, under label options. Now I can click on value from sales, go and select these names for my tech companies, press OK, and then this should add the names. Just like before, we will do a new line, and that will put it like this. You can control the size of the font by, you know, going, because you've already selected the labels, you can go and reduce the size. You can also change the, you know, the color of the text. And if this is still too big, you can go a little bit smaller so that it's clearly within. Same thing here, click on the other series label and you can control the size so that it doesn't um, look unusually large compared to the other CD. So make sure that you're consistent with it. Uh, I think in this case, I went for six and then here I went for six. So it is consistent. Now let's talk about what does this um, bubble chart help us with? So as I said at the beginning, it allows us to visualize two different variables, revenue and net margin, which is what the scatter plot also does. But now the size of these data points is representing the number of employees. So TCS, which is the largest circle here, has the most number of employees, clearly outweighing all these other, uh, you know, companies. The point is, 
in addition to understanding the relationship within a series. That means, so what is the relationship between revenue and net margin percentage for the tech companies? And you can see clearly that there is some relationship that is diagonal or linear from uh, as the revenue is increasing, the net margin percentage also seems to be increasing. On the other hand, for the, the, the banks, they are not necessarily, especially the Punjab National Bank seems to be an outlier here, whereas the other three uh, banks seem to be following a certain pattern. As the revenue increases, SBI having the largest revenue, the net margin percentage is the lowest for SBI. Again, I'm leaving Punjab National Bank out. Um, if we include Punjab National Bank, it clearly seems like an outlier, right? So it is, it has lower uh, revenue, but the net margin percentage is also lower, and it also has fewer employees compared to the others. So the bottom line here is visually represent not only two dimensions here, revenue or net margin, but also allow the user to understand the third, which is the number of employees by the size of these data points. That's where the bubble chart is helpful. Um, we can also do motion bubble charts, which is something that I've done in the past, uh, and I published it also, where essentially we write a macro to allow the time change. So this revenue and the net margin percentage could be for one quarter, but what if you have data for two years or five years uh, across multiple quarters. So we can write a macro to change the time period and let the bubble chart move. That's another effective visualization. Again, I'll link to the other video that I've done in the past, you know, the template that I've created. That's the extension of the bubble chart. But if you have any questions on bubble charts and how you can create this for multiple series with labels, just like what we have done before, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in another video.